amputate a man's leg and he can still feel it tickling. Tell me, Mom, when your little girl is on the slab, where will it tickle you? We're Generation X, laughing at the world today. We're getting older, but we're still gonna play. Last week, we talked about this ad nauseum, and I'm probably uh, going to do it again this week. Not the whole time, but there's still fallout from this uh, this uh, roast. Um, but before we get to that, I want to talk about the other thing we talked about quite a bit last week, and that is Jerry Seinfeld, who we didn't get to it because um, I hadn't listened to the episode yet. But Jerry was on last week's Fly on the Wall. I guess by now it's two weeks ago. Um, the Fly in the Wall podcast, where he had made a comment about how Howard Stern was outflanked by comedy podcasts. And he said, and let's face it, I mean, he's not really known for his comedy chops, right? I mean, he's okay. I mean, he's surrounded by good people. And he made both David Spade and Dana Carvey very uncomfortable because they both love Howard and they're on that show all the time. And uh, he immediately issued an apology is that what I meant to say, not outflanked, what I meant to say was he's surrounded by them. And Howard's a dear friend of mine, and I, I shouldn't have said it. I'm sorry. He and was it, just trying to suck up to Dana and David, I think. Well, he said that uh, he was not just talking about them. He was talking about all the other ones, because he's been doing a lot of them. He was on Neil Brennan, and then he was on uh, he was on uh, Club Random, which is one of the most boring. Even you can have a great guest on that show. I just can't take it. I can't sit and listen. Me either. I cannot listen. Yeah, I can't listen to Bill Maher for two hours. You want to drink? You want to? You want to get high? Mm. <laughs> I got to practice him. I think I'm doing okay with the Jerry. I think I'm doing. Yeah, okay. on, was that you doing Jerry on Trambles, or was that AI? No, that was me. Yeah, I thought that was you. It was good. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, uh, on Trambles last week, which is Tim's audio only one. I don't know why he does it. He's got this. This is fine. You know, why spread yourself thin? I did a, a parody of his address to the kids at Duke who got up and walked out on me. Why did they get up and all six of them? You're right. Howard Stern fans and they were mad at me. That's what happened. They were mad that I was joking about Howard, and then Howard, who was a whole army of people at Duke, they all got up and walked out. It's just odd that they're all protesters. But- Them walking out, like, completely stopped the entire Gaza offensive just like that. <laughs> I know, it's over. It's over. So glad. I'm so glad they did that. I think well, thanks a lot. Israel surrendered. A, they Jeff- need to block a few more celebrities on social media, and then, then it'll... it'll, it'll oh, yeah, out. that's it. Now, to go after people who haven't even said anything, you know, there are celebrities who don't want to weigh in on an issue. That's, that's why they're they're going after him. They won't yeah. say something. You're complicit. Silence is complicit. Yeah. All right. Right now, we're all going to say where we stand. We're not famous enough for anybody to care. So we don't have to. It's all secular religion based and I could care less. Yep. Yep. The big three. The big three Abrahamic religions. Why did th- I didn't even know Abraham? I thought Abraham killed his son. I guess he didn't. Now there's three religions, all from the same one. Four, if you count Mormonism, but I don't count Mormonism. I would like to have more than one wife, but who wants that? You're a creepy Scientologist. It's okay. It's, it's a okay. Si- he's a Seinfeldologist. I'm a Sci- Seinfeldologist. <laughs> when you die, you go live in a volcano, and then you get your own planet. That's that's all of them together. You get your own planet, 72 virgins, you're born again on a cloud from a volcano, and you hang out with Xenu. But you, have to, but you have to eat unleavened bread. Yes, but you can also <laughs> eat leavened bread on certain days. Bobcat was on some podcast talking about that this week or last week. What, leavened bread? No, the whole how how Seinfeld hated him and and dissed him on the. Don't even mention his card. name. I, he's not funny. He has one <laughs> bit. He screams. 
It, it, what did he say about it? What podcast, by the way? Nick? I can't remember, but I just saw a clip of it. Uh, it just basically said why the, why the feud started because he called him a creepy Scientologist who dates teenage girls. So, is Jerry a Scientologist? I didn't know. No, he, he diddled around with it. I dabbled in it a little yeah. bit. It's okay to dabble. I think the first time they asked him for money, he was like, hey, I'm not a Scientologist anymore. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> Or they oh, wanted to go clear. Yeah. yeah. My Thetans are just fine. <laughs> if, you, if it doesn't annoy you, I'm going to do this the whole time. Like <laughs> Adam Ray does Dr. Phil for three hours. Give it yeah. a rest. No kidding. That's getting the Dr. Phil. It's funny, but it's getting old. It was funny. That's why I didn't watch this week's episode of uh, Kill Tony. As soon as I saw he was together, I'm like, okay, I don't need to watch that. So it doesn't even sound like Dr. Phil either. So that's the other thing. That's sort. like a character of Dr. Phil. Yeah. Hey, you don't sound like Seinfeld. What's your <laughs> problem? You think you're all high and mighty? You're never going to be on Kill Tony unless you're there cleaning up after. Tried to email. Well, I, did, I texted Bert Kreischer. Uh, he, when was it? Yesterday morning. Because I have his phone number. I texted him. And uh, it was a real nice text. Uh, and invited him to come on sometime. No reply, of course. That's okay. He doesn't know me. I'm not big enough. I told him I loved his vodka, and I've been drinking it nonstop. I even let my kid have some, and he didn't even reply. <laughs> Maybe he doesn't even have that phone anymore, Sam. Oh, it's his number, because I pranked it before when I was drunk. How long ago was that? Mm, last fall. Two hours. Oh, okay. When I pranked Jim Gaffig. <laughs> left messages on his answering machine. Hey, it's Jim. Leave a message. And you want to talk about heat? I think I said something like <laughs> <laughs> heat two is coming out. I want to talk about it now. <laughs> the worst ever was when fucking Adam Carolla actually answered. <laughs> oh no, you got the ace man. No, who uh, before that? A long time ago. Uh, who's the guy that used to be on the uh, Daily Show? Remember this guy, Lewis Lewis Black. Lewis Black. Yeah, I called him one night and I was trash. Hello. I go, hey man, you want to suck my cock? And he goes, sure, I'll suck your cock. <laughs> you may have actually cracked something open there. You didn't even realize it. <laughs> well, he and I are Eskimo brothers. <laughs> so, uh, Jerry, people, the, 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 the people around the, the, the pod, certain pod people, the pod, cast people are saying that jerry's done other people are saying that this is a rebirth for him i don't know jerry's funny he's always going to be funny he has all the money in the world to do whatever he wants and he can keep making goofy movies uh that make everybody laugh unless you're snooty um uh film critic howard said those comments were weird uh jerry is my personal friend he and his wife hang out with me and my wife and we do things but i forgive him and uh, he called me and he you know he wanted to in a sense, in a sense, in a sense, in a sense, I think it has something to do with this relationship with his father. That's all Howard talks about now. Uh, but anyway, they're, they're buddies again. And uh, so moving on to more Netflix post uh, last weekend, um, there's a lot of fallout from the Tom Brady roast, namely that Tom Brady didn't go to the after party, was angry and regrets that he did it. Well, no shit, right? His wife's pissed at him. His kids hate him now. So. He, he, at first, he wasn't because he was like, they're going to pay me $50 million to have people tell jokes about my ex-wife. Yeah. That's, that's fine. But then when his kids were hurt by it, that's when he started being upset. Well, the kids shouldn't have watched it. Yeah. Yeah, but that was perfect for Giselle, though. Just have the kids watch it, get, have them get upset, and then you got yeah. something to bitch about. More of the fallout. Um Bert Kreischer and Tom Segura have been getting an awful lot of shit. Now, we said that we didn't really like their performance. and they, they fucking bombed. Yeah, they fucking bombed. But that's not a reason to hate them, right? No, I don't hate them. I just think they, they should have maybe done it separately instead of doing it together. I think so, too. If they, if they had done roast jokes, yeah, uh, it would have been great. And I didn't know. Go ahead. Getting up there and comparing them to Hitler, it's not funny. No. Um, Sarah Tiana turns out wrote a lot of the jokes for that night. I didn't know that. Why wasn't she on? She's funny. Yeah. Uh, um, she was on uh, my old co-worker's radio show. 
South Side Steve, but he's friends with her because she used to be an intern for the regular guys show in Atlanta long, long time ago. Uh, but Dustin, you watched, I watched all of Jimmy Carr, which they, uh, Two Bears, One Cave recorded an episode the day after the roast. And uh, Tom and and Bert had Jimmy Carr on. Again, here's another guy because of my self-imposed comedy boycott over the years, which I've now lifted, of course, because I talk about it all the time. But oh, he's very funny. I just he's just, so funny. I hate I hate his laugh that he does. <laughs> yeah, it's terrible. Yeah, yeah. If 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 you could fast forward through that fucking stupid laugh that he does, his comedy is very funny. Yeah, he's very bright, very quick. Yeah, he's quick, and he, he's he has no problem being non PC. Oh, none at all. Oh, yeah. He could have yeah. went through a cancellation thing, which I didn't know about um but before dustin you're going to talk about that a little bit right well yeah well it was funny because they they had him on and also with bert and tom to their credit i guess they didn't it wasn't their decision to do what they did it was netflix's producers that wanted them to try something new and Uh so they set that whole thing up and i think it was because they thought it would be more like something that was on your mom's house where they do a lot of uh, pictures and media Damn. with the jokes. <clears throat> and it's a three hour show. So breaking that up, it, how they did kind of broke the night up a little bit. And Jimmy Carr was saying that 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 was really interesting. But they both agreed that it bombed. I mean, it totally bombed. Um, But Jimmy just wouldn't let up. On, oh, here's on Bert. <laughs> <laughs> but awesome. what was funny is Bert actually, when Jimmy sat down and they started talking about the roast, Bert said, you know, when Tony got up and was talking to me, I was reading the prompter in front of everybody. And Jimmy looks at him and goes, why you're telling us like no one saw it. He goes, yeah. we all saw it. <laughs> Everyone in the world saw it. He goes, but, uh, but yeah, he was, he was giving them shit and. In the comments, I thought something was really interesting. Um, Everyone mentioned that nobody, if you remember the roast, everybody got roasted, but no one roasted Tom at all. Mm -hmm. Not really. He got left out. And the thoughts on that were maybe this was, you know, all of all of his peers kind of trying to let him know, you know, what you're doing is not helping your career any. And they just cut him off let me ask you guys this question do you guys hate that show two bears one cave do you hate now we talked about your mom's house i don't like that show because i don't like i don't listen to it unless they have a guest that i like yeah but what do you think steph do you watch yeah i don't listen to it i mean it's i i go through spurts with like all of these shows Right. Well, I'll listen to them a little bit, and then I just don't. And um, and I only have so much time to listen to podcasts, truly. Right. So, and, uh, you know, I got to listen to murders, and that's my main <laughs> focus. I what if can't really, Tom did a murder podcast? If they did that, I think I might like it. But then, you know, it, the, the Henry and them, they've already kind of covered the comedy yeah. horror. I mean, I don't think anybody else can do it better than them, than the last podcast, last podcast on the left. Nobody else is going to do it better than that, but... Uh, I mean, it's like you know, the same thing with Bill Burr and uh, Slime the Wall, all of them. I'll listen to them all just like a little bit. I and I started listening to the Kill Tony, and it's you know pretty cool too. But it's long though; that's a in- huge investment of time. But Burr gets on my nerves. He just rambles on and on too much, and Tom, he just seems like a shadow of his former self. He's just yeah. not who he's not the Louisiana joke tom segura anymore i mean that when guy when i'm scrolling through tiktok and i see to, a tom segura clip uh, if he's fat i'll stop and watch it yeah. yes yeah yeah if he's not fat i just swipe up yep. he's you jeff you're totally right he's definitely a victim of he lost the funny with the fat it's gone i think about bert though i can sit down and listen to bert tell a story and because he's a good storyteller and I don't care if he's making it up or not. He's trying to 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 get a laugh. That's his job. That's what he does. I don't consider him to be a traditional set up joke, set up joke, stand up comedian. Um, and I want him to come on this show. So that's why I'm being nice. But, um, but no, he, I, I, he tells too much, though. That's my thing with him. He does. Man, he, he does. tells too much. He's too TMI. Like mm-hmm. some of it. 
you, which I, I think that's his whole persona or whatever, but ugh, just great a little bit. Look, I know we only get 500 to 1,000 views every week, but come on. Come on, man. And they cut his they cut his cocaine joke. Yeah. Yes, I saw that. Yeah. And probably for good reason. Yeah, probably. <laughs> that's the last thing he needs. Well, that's the thing. He get, he's been wanting to try it, and he's so open about all the things that he does. He talks about it on Two Bears. Right. And when someone gets on Coke, you can tell. I mean, they the personality changes. Oh, yeah. And they don't stop talking. Exactly. And that's which is why it's the last thing Bert needs. Exactly. I don't know. I don't know how much longer they're going to be together. I don't I don't think it's going to last that much longer than at least doing the podcasts. I really don't. I mean, I think Bert was successful on his own. They're both smart to get into that universe. I mean, all this is all going to dry up someday. So that's why we're trying to, you know, grab on something. <laughs> drag us. Drag us. I guess. Um, all right. Well, we're done talking about that. The usual shows that I watch, the clip shows, Comedy Enforcement uh, made a point that uh, the roast exposed the Rogan verse. But I disagree with that because I think almost everybody from the Rogan verse killed. Yeah. Except for, I mean, except for Bert and Tom, everybody else is doing great. Plus, Kill Tony right. is selling out Madison Square Garden right now. Yeah. That's I did, I did, yeah, nothing happened there. And then uh, Podcast Cringe, which I watched, they they covered the same stuff we did. So, all right. As they say on Dudesy, moving on. Uh, did anybody finish Baby Reindeer other than myself? Yeah, I finished it. I did. You, you did? What'd you think? It was hilarious. <laughs> yeah, I'm, glad they, I'm glad they released it during Netflix as a joke. <laughs> that scene where the guy is uh, putting his finger in his ass, where the guy is uh, molesting him at his house, the uh, producer. But now that has fallout, too. The Fiona Harvey, Fiona Harvey, who is uh, the char- the person that Martha is based off of, went on Piers Morgan and did an interview and then ended up lying the entire time. And he kept catching her in lies. And it was just funny to watch her explain herself. You could tell that she's that type of yeah, person. He was like, let me let me see your phone. She's like, oh, I don't have that phone anymore. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and she can't delete the Twitter account that she did all those tweets from. So they're all there. Right. Well, Piers better get ready for all the emails and voicemails he's getting. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody that's interviewed her so far has had that happen to them. And she's going to sue the show. Um, or yeah, she's trying to sue for like one and a half million dollars. I don't think she's gonna fucking pocket change for Netflix. No shit. Those probably it's... just give her the money to shut her up. I just wonder, is she, do you think she'll ever at some point actually really, really hurt somebody? I don't know. No, I think she's harmless except for annoyance. Yeah, I do too. But you think about the guy, what's his name? The actor. Richard Gadd is the creator of the show. And of course, he plays himself, you know, with a different name. But he is a completely flawed, terrible, awful person. Probably the worst person in the entire series because he allows this to happen to him. He gets off on being stalked. He gets off on this woman wanting to be around him, although he hates it, but he gets off on it. I think he liked the fact that she was a fan of his. A fan or an obsessed? Yeah. Met him well, I mean, the fact that she was maybe the, one of the first people that liked his comedy. That's true. Yeah. You see that scene in the bar where she starts, or in the comedy club where she starts laughing and other yeah. things. So in a way, she might have been amused. Yeah. It explains, you know, why, too, with the whole molesting of him and whatnot, the, yeah. where his head space was in when she came yeah. into his life. Yeah, after all that anonymous sex that he had with everybody, and then he couldn't get it up for his girlfriend. I like that actress, too. Um, that character was really good, too. Um, good show. I mean, w- that guy has a bright future ahead of him, Richard Gadd. Good storyteller. Um, well shot. Interesting topic. So he definitely has that. What a wonderful day! I'm wearing my shirt tonight, my uh, Escape from the Planet of the Apes shirt. I think I'm the only one who saw the 
Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, which is the newest, uh, the most recent film setting up a new trilogy of films. No one else saw it, right? No, I <laughs> thought about going on the weekend, but I just got high and didn't go anywhere. Well, I won't belabor it then. Um, Wes Ball is the director, and he's created, he's taken the original material, which is the the rebooted films, and uh, the James Franco, and, and then the two that came after that, the one with Gary Oldman, which is Dawn rise and war for the planet of the apes uh it's 300 years in the future and uh this is a new group of apes caesar's long dead um and they're i'm not going to spoil anything was Adrian. danny gould in it no he wasn't unfortunately <laughs> he should have been danny there was a gay orangutan but um i won't spoil how that comes up it's very subtle they're like oh yeah that's right this is a disney movie you gotta have that in there um, but it was really, really good. I'm surprised Monkey Sex 39 didn't see it. 35. Oh, 35. Yeah. 39 did see it. 35 did. <laughs> 39 saw it. And I read all the reviews. <laughs> if you're into this genre of movies like I am, I love the Planet of the Apes movies, even the really bad ones. The original five, I think three of them are good. Um, one of them is okay. And then the last one with Paul Williams is terrible. But it's still a Planet of the Apes movie. I like the shitty TV show from the 70s. I like the cartoon. Uh, the difference in the cartoon, the animated show in the 70s, is when the astronauts land, the apes have a modern society with cars and planes and stuff like that. And then you have the, the Tim Burton one exists in its own universe because it was so universally panned they didn't give him money to make any more. Uh, but the, the, the way that they're telling the story now, if you like the first three, this is a time jump. Um, the They're apes. doing a, a, amazing shit with with the motion capture. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah. yeah. People are complaining they want they want to go back to practical effects, but you can't now. You know what? You're going to have a thousand years from now. They're all walking erect and looking like Roddy McDowell. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so uh, I, I'm ape for the apes. Um, and then lastly, uh, before we move on, what's going on with people in New York City hating Boardwalk Empire? <laughs> Steve Buscemi had the shit beat out of him, ended up going to the hospital. Uh, the guy got arrested, but there's there's no motive, right? Did the guy just hate Boardwalk Empire? No, this, this has been going on for a while. Just people just randomly punching people in in New York City. Michael Stolberg got attacked in, in yeah. Central Park. They got somebody threw a rock at him because they didn't like his portrayal of Arnold Rothstein in uh, <laughs> Boardwalk. He chased that guy down though. He did. And got him himself. Yeah. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Mm. Jeez, man. Leave our aging. We're aging. So, but he's older than us. Leave our aging actors alone. Steve Buscemi was a hero. He was yeah, a fighter. I did that to Rick Moranis a couple of years ago. I know. Because his name has anus in it. Yeah, there must be some sort of a challenge, you know, that you have to find so like a some kind celebrity. Of gang, some like gang thing. That just Yeah. If you see a celebrity on the street, you got to punch him in the face. Did the guy say anything to him or did you just attack him? Punch him in the face. That's it. That's the, I don't think any of these ones, none of them they have said anything. You just get punched in the face. You're just like walking along, looking at a bird. Bam, you get punched in the face. Yeah, that happened to the prime minister of Slovakia today. He's just walking along and somebody shoots him in the head. No. <laughs> well. Out of nowhere. Why do people keep trying to assassinate the presidents of Slovakia? Why can't they get back together with the Czechs? Czechoslovakia. One country. Maybe. Me and my friend Tony followed Alec Baldwin for like six blocks in New York one time. You did? We should have punched him. No. Oh, yeah, maybe. You'd be famous. <laughs> if you do it now, you don't go to jail. You would have been. Did did he notice you were following him? No. He was talking to people. He was going he was going the same way we were, and we just happened to be following him. Mm -hmm. People were coming the other direction, we're talking to him. Was he speaking to them? That must yeah, suck to a little. celebrity in New York. I think it'd be pretty want. hard. I think it'd be pretty hard to sucker punch Alec Baldwin, though. Yeah, he's yeah. probably always waiting for it. Yeah, and he's ready to beat the hell out of you. <laughs> I saw Penn Jillette one time. I should have punched him. You want to punch everybody? You <laughs> you get a ladder to punch Penn Jillette, wouldn't you? I uh, I was in New York City once and walking. I think uh, I was. It was two thousand three. Must have been two thousand three. I was there with uh, Autumn Fisher. And we were walking down the street and by Central Park and Ben Stiller walked. He was wearing like a jogging getup and he had headphones on. And I noticed him and he just went, 
you know, he put his hand <laughs> acknowledge it and kept walking. I didn't bother him. Uh, and then one time Jeff and I were in New York City and I swear I saw Yoko Ono across the street, but I don't know why she would have been in Greenwich Village. I, could- I saw Fred Schneider having breakfast one time in New York City. Oh, yeah? Yeah. What was he having? A rock lobster? <laughs> pancakes, I think. <laughs> pancakes. My kid has pancakes every morning. But they're frozen and they're small, so I can microwave them. She pushed a kid out of a chair yesterday at daycare. Oh, no. I'm like, why did you do that? He wouldn't play. All right, that's a good excuse. <laughs> so this morning when I dropped him off, I made him give the boy a hug and say he was sorry. <laughs> he was like, oh, uh, uh, what? how do I do that? Just go up and give him a hug. Say you're sorry. You're gigantic three-year-old. <laughs> did, the boy, did the boy accept a hug? Yes, he did. But the boy, I think, is two or just turned two. So he he understands it even less than Gilbert. <laughs> <laughs> he had completely forgotten about it. <laughs> yeah. We were trying to ask him last night, why did you do it? And it's like it's like asking a dog why it shit on the floor. You're not going to get an answer. Speaking of dogs, I must say that last Wednesday, when I got home, we record the show on Wednesdays. I went to bed, and when I woke up Thursday morning, one of our sweet little Boston Terriers had passed away. And so um, Rizzo, and it's pop culture related because her mommy, her dog mommy, named her after Rizzo from Greece. And uh, she passed away, so she's in doggy heaven now. Which, when my son came home from Tybee Island, he went, Rizzo's in 11. <laughs> and I said, no, Gilbert, that would be All great. dogs go to 11. Yes. Yeah. And Drake goes to 11. All right, this isn't a big deal or anything, but Andrew McCarthy, who is uh, one of the quintessential Brad Packers from the 80s, uh, what has he done since? We'll have to look into it. Um, but there is a Brat Pack documentary coming out on Hulu on June 13th. Uh, it's called Brats, and he's the executive producer. And uh, anyway, he sits down with David Bloom, who is the uh, the journalist from New Yorker magazine or New York magazine, who coined the phrase in 1985. And I'm going to watch this because that's right up my alley. I love the We're all Brat Pack adjacent, at least. We're the we? Breakfast Club generation. We are. Yeah, I want to watch it. So, (laughs) yeah. Are you finished? No. Not even close, bud. Yeah, there you go. I got you for the rest of your natural born life. Tim, does Barry Manilow know you've been raiding his wardrobe? You'll find the answer to that question next week. (laughs) You mess with the bull boy, you'll get the horn. Um, So I thought it'd be fun if we all just sort of named. We don't have to write a treatment for the sequel. That was an idea I had. You don't have (laughs) to. Um, I'm going to say I would, the best and the worst, um, Brad Pack movies, and then your favorite actor and favorite actress. Now I'm basing mine off the time because when you hear my favorite actor and actress, you're gonna be like, oh, they're not around anymore. Well, they are, but they just don't do a lot anymore. Not since that pirate movie where she had sex on the boat. Anyway, uh, my favorite Brad Pack movie is the outsiders, which I think came out long before that term Brad Pack, but they're all in it including Tom Cruise and Emilio Estevez. They're all in it. The Swayze, uh, Rob Lowe. I love The Outsiders. Francis Ford Coppola movie based on an S.E. Hinton book. That's one of the first movies. I didn't have a VCR, so I recorded it off of HBO on a cassette, and I would just listen to it over and over again. Um, so that's my favorite. And my least favorite is St. Elmo's Fire. I never liked that movie. I watched it once and thought, this is dumb. Good song, though. My favorite actor is Judd Nelson. From that era, from those films, as a Brat Packer, I loved Judd Nelson. He had a movie, a non-Brat Pack movie that came out in the late 80s where he was, uh, it's called From the Hip, right? Yeah, yeah. Was, Stormy Weather. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I love that movie. Yeah. With very the, underrated. Go ahead. With what's his face? Uh, John. Um, John Hurt. John Hurt, yes. Yeah. John Hurt. I was the doctor in the Christmas special 10 years ago. I was also in contact. The 16 Candles, Cows of Brat Pack movie? Yeah, of course. Absolutely. Yeah, that would be mine, though. All right. And then my favorite actress, Molly Ringwald. I loved Molly Ringwald. And I fell in love with Molly Ringwald when she was on Facts of Life. All right. Those are mine. Yeah, but yeah, I'd definitely be Breakfast Club is first for me. Yeah. And I love St. Almost Fire, Tim. I mean, obviously, it's a chick flick for sure. because It does Rob- mean women, yeah, yeah. 
I mean, Rob Lowe. And then yeah, Rob Lowe's it. probably my favorite of the, the Brat and Packers. He, well, and he gives the pity bang to Mayor Winningham, which yeah. is like, you know, as a, as a dumpling girl myself, I thought, oh, if he'll bang her, maybe I could get a shot at that. Sweet, <laughs> sweet. You know, but the, so yeah, that's why I'm I like getting ducky. <laughs> <laughs> But I thought Animal's Fire was uh, not a good movie, but I liked it anyway. But Breakfast Club is my favorite. And favorite actor, probably Rob Lowe. Yeah. You got a favorite actress from that era? Mm, I mean, I guess Demi Moore. She was a good actress. That's right. She was in the Brad Pack. Is less than zero a Brad Pack movie or is it too late? Oh, yeah. It's Brad Pack. Okay. Robert Downey Jr. And yeah, One, one Crazy Summer of Better Off Dead could be considered Brad Pack movies, too, then. They are. Why? How? Because they have more than one? Yeah. Yeah, but Jesus, it's Cusack's brat back adjacent. He is, but they're above that. They're above that. They're funny movies that exist in their own universe. I agree, but I like to put them like way up here. And then the Brat Pack movies are kind of like right here. <laughs> My favorite Brat Pack movie would be Weird Science. Yeah. Oh, God, I even that think about it. Yeah. Good one. It, it's, my, it's one of my favorites. Breakfast Club, yes, but it's been... I don't know if just because I've seen it so many times, it's kind of lost right. its whatever it, I held dear for it. But um, and worst was class. Oh, yeah, that, yeah, movie. that movie sucked. That's yeah, terrible. Uh, Brit Science favorite, is such a timeless movie, though. It's so yeah, good. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, favorite RDJ. actor was Emilio Estevez. I oh, yeah, always yeah. always liked him. And if we're going along the the ex- right extended. On. Um, Brat Pack, then Young Guns would also be considered a Brat yeah. Pack movie. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Except for they didn't allow, you know, guys like Lou Diamond Phillips into the Brat Pack. <laughs> Molly Ringwald was also my favorite actor. Navajo. Yeah. Navajo. Can you yeah, Red Dog. that chicken? <laughs> <laughs> that horrible Bon Jovi song. Blaze of Glory. Shut that was in the second one. Oh, Weird what? Science was hilarious, though. I saw that in the theater. Oh, that, <laughs> that guy goes, can we keep this between us? I'd really hate to lose really my teaching lose. job. Yeah, I'd <laughs> really the guy from the hills have eyes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> that guy was in a lot of movies playing, always played a creep. Can we keep this between us? I'd hate to lose my teaching job. God bless you. <laughs> it's a, it was a weird science quote as how Neil and I ended up together. Weird. No way. I, how? I made a a reference we were in like an AOL hotbed chat room in 1997 and I made a weird science reference and he was like oh blah 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 and so then we just started chatting the next thing you know it's 20 million years later that's a nice story yeah I mean it's kind of like uh, that's it's been the basis of our relationship is that we've always uh, liked a lot of the same crap so even when we can't stand each other we still like the same things that's cool. <laughs> then you can go on AOL chat rooms and talk about it. Right. Now they just text, text each other from the same room. Yeah. <laughs> ew. Ew. Oh. Ew, that was Gary. Who is this Gary character? I didn't think it was a whale's dick, honey. Oh, yeah. Pac- that's Pete Paxton right there. Hell yeah. You're screwed, but wide. Yeah. How about a nice... Greasy pork sandwich served in a dirty ashtray. Get to the bottom of this but first. I'm going to butter your mouth. Said, yeah. You two donkey dicks couldn't get laid in a morgue. A lot of great quotes from him. Rest in peace, by the way, that dude. All right. So that's uh, we're all going to watch that documentary. I guess we'll talk about it afterwards. News, trailers, and trends with Steph. I mean, you're probably not going to watch this, Tim, but I know that uh, Jeff and I, probably Dustin, are going to watch The Office reboot. At least give it a chance. I'll give it a chance. Yeah. And they throw out some into it. They throw out some plot details this week just to kind of let you know that it's going to just be set in the Office universe. Nobody okay. from the original show is going to be in it. Uh, it's going to be set like at a, a newspaper in the Midwest that's uh, trying to stay alive, obviously, in this right. day and age. Not a lot of print media. OK, so yeah, I think it. I mean, just the fact that it's um, all new characters, that intrigues me. And I, I love uh, Abbott Elementary. 
So they took the office format and yeah. they've ran with it and they've done a wonderful job with it, which, you know, it's pretty hard to replicate Parks and Rec in the office. And so it gives me hope that this will probably be good if they have the same type of well, creators. The only connecting tissue between the office and this is it's supposed to be the same documentary crew. Yeah. But at yes. okay, location. So. All right. That was the plan originally. He was going to make like and have the office go on for a few seasons and then do an, a totally new show like the hospital okay you know, it would be just something different with a whole new cast of people right this isn't going to be on nbc it's going to be on peacock peacock is it going to be called the office do you know no i don't know what it's going to be called it'd probably be called the paper or yeah. something like that yeah but uh, Carell's not going to be on there. I mean, the lead guy on here is Domino Gleason. Because he um, killed, he killed Michael Scott in that show. That, right? that, Kidnapped him. Yeah. I never finished that. That was a crazy show, but I never finished it. Oh, sorry for the spoiler alert. He oh, killed so he him did kill him. Yeah. Oh well, shit. Okay. What show are you feeling. talking about? The I don't know. Where he, Michael Scott was a psychiatrist, and oh, he, yeah, 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 he yeah. was he was a psycho, and he killed people, and he wanted help. So he kidnapped okay. Michael Scott and held him in his basement. And killed him. At the end, yeah. yeah. Sorry, spoiler alert. And I just want to talk to uh, Hannibal Trump for a minute because he made a big appearance at New Jersey. Trumpable. Well, I did a big rally in New Jersey over the weekend, and for some reason I kept bringing up the late, great Hannibal Lecter. A census taker once tried to test me. I ate his liver. With some fava beans and a nice Diet Coke, washed it right down. You know, Joe Biden wouldn't even bother to eat the beans. They have to make it into a pablum for him. <laughs> we begin by coveting what we see every day. And for Joe Biden, that's life. People breathing, having a conversation, thinking, not having a dead brain. Don't you feel eyes moving over your body, Melania? <laughs> They're not mine. Mine are looking at a porn star with big fat jokes. <laughs> And don't your eyes seek out the things you want? Mine do. And then I pay for them. <laughs> Amputate a man's leg and he can still feel it tickling. Tell me, Mom, when your little girl is on the slab, where will it tickle you? You know how quickly the boys found you all those tedious, sticky fumblings in the back of cars. While you could only dream of getting out, getting anywhere, all the way to the corrupt F. B.I. and the whole Justice Department run by Joe Biden and Merrick Garland. And their only goal is to keep me from speaking in front of you today. Speaking in front of you. You still wake up sometimes, don't you? You still wake up in the dark and you hear the screaming of the limes. The screaming of the limes as you make lime, lime, key lime pie. And then you dip it in Cheetos and you put Cheeto dust on it. And you eat the key lime pie with the Cheeto dust. <laughs> Which is something that a person on this show did the other day. <laughs> Quid pro quo. I tell you things. You tell me things. Not about this case, though. About yourself. Quid pro quo. I don't even know what that means. I read it in a book. Yes or no, I'm going to eat this police officer who is in <laughs> a movie that I liked a lot. Did everybody see the movie? He was the first, uh, this guy, he was the first sheriff. On Squid Billies, which is my favorite adult swim show. <laughs> I mean, bar none, it's adult swim. And I even like the ones with Tracy Morgan. I see people on Reddit all the time going, I can't watch it anymore because I know an instant was a bigot and a racist. I get it. I get it. But, you know, you still laugh. Right. And a lot of people make, you know, a lot of people count on getting money for that. Why Tim Andrews just got a check last week for eight dollars from an episode. OK, that's been streaming a lot. Thanks to the new SAG after streaming laws. OK, it's good for Tim Andrews. He can buy maybe a pack of smokes, at least three quarters. There's one with that kind of money. It's fantastic. Watch Squid Billies. Last one. All good things to those who wait. I've waited, but how long can you wait, Jackie boy? Or how long can Jackie boy wait? Who is he talking about? Jack, Jack who? Jack Smith, the corrupt prosecutor who is trying to punish me for taking home a box of documents like who hasn't, like Joe Biden put him in the back of his Corvette. Our little Billy must be looking for that next special someone it's probably nancy pelosi but they probably would leave her in the will because she's old and ugly all right i gotta go thank you very much the late great hannibal lecture <laughs> that's what that speech was called the late great hannibal lecture yes <laughs> <laughs>
I don't know where that came from, but it was funny. Oh, it's yeah. like the stupid, funny shit that he did when he was running the first time. Not the political stuff, but when he would go off and just say the most outrageous, ridiculous stand up comedian type stuff. That was the stuff that was funny. I think he just he does. He just I, he he should just don't even know if he can even believe that he gets away with what he gets away with. I, I don't just, believe what pushing I pushing the envelope. I had sex with a horse with breasts. <laughs> And now I'm in court after I paid her to shut up and she didn't. Uh, well, uh, you know, it just gave us a preview, I'm sure, of uh, the coming debates, which will be just uh, really. Oh, the debates are going to be fantastic. Right here in Atlanta. No yeah, audience. Wait. Wait. Yeah. Uh, they got a new South Park coming out. Oh, is it a new full length movie? Yes. And they, I don't. Who knows about these things until you see them on X? Did you guys all know about this already? Like, no. 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 And so yeah. uh, I guess Cartman goes on in Ozempic and yeah. the I'm sure this is going to be very funny. The trailer, thankfully, did not have a lot in it because I don't like I hate it when trailers spoil everything. But it's called South Park, the end of obesity. <laughs> so. If anybody can lampoon the Ozempic business, which, you know, everybody that I know that has taken it has lost a lot of weight. But then as soon as they stop taking it. They gain all the weight back. Do they get immediately? The boobs, the Ozempic, huh? the boobs deflate when you take Ozempic. So oh, women really? are yeah. these slapjacks. <laughs> I don't know anybody who has kept off weight that has taken Ozempic. So it's like you got to stay on it forever uh, because you. Yeah, yeah, but whatever. Uh, well, it turns because... you into a diabetic, by the way. <laughs> so whatever, I don't care. Have you guys seen this live stream portal? Any video of the live stream portal that they've got in New York right, City? I saw the guy that was trying to see his cousin in in Ireland. Yeah. yeah. And then we, so she said he was waiting for her to get there and people were showing fucking Nazi shit. Yeah. Nazi people, you, the planes crashing into the towers and stuff. Yes. Nine, and then nine, the nine. OnlyFans model who, who flashed her titties. Yeah. And when, so because of all that, they had to uh, temporarily shut it down. So that they could uh, cordon off some of this inappropriate ha- behavior on the Dublin side. What do they expect uh, on the Dublin they, side? They put it in like the worst fucking neighborhood too in, like, in Dublin. Yeah, you, in between you like six expect clubs. That. You have yeah. to expect that. That's what people are going to do. Oh, there's a bunch of people in New York. I'm going to go show them my dick. You know, you can't put that thing there and expect people to remember when in 2017 or whatever, right after. Uh, Trump was inaugurated. Uh, uh, Shia LaBeouf put that camera, uh, put that camera in New York, doing yeah. Trump. Herpes. Jesus, he put that camera in New York, and it was on he will not divide us dot com. Yeah. It was constantly trolled, which was yep. fun. Yeah, you, you know. Okay, make a statement some other way. I agreed. I, I don't know what they thought was going to end up happening. Nothing I think good. It's funny. I think I mean, it is funny, but nothing good's going to come. If they were going to maybe if they would have put it in London, I don't know. Maybe they wouldn't have got as yeah, many Nazis. Like a Dilly symbols. Circus or something. <laughs> yeah. Something like that. Maybe then maybe. Totally. Uh, I don't know if you guys have seen all the brouhaha going on between. I mean, this isn't really our thing, but the Gen Z's and the millennials are having an all out war over ankle socks right now. I'm cutting all my socks down to be ankle length. <laughs> They, Gen Z, Gen Z has canceled ankle socks. They are for old people. A hundred percent. You used to come home and put on your ankle socks and watch TV at night, like Mash and your show of shows and laughing and all that crazy stuff. And now you can't come home and put on your half socks or your ankle socks. You have to come home and put those ones that go all the way up to your thighs. It's not fair. Which I don't give a crap. I like my ankle socks, and I've been wearing them since I was very young. So I don't know where Gen Z's getting this crap at. And their shit, they're wearing knee socks. It's summertime. It's hot. They've got these damn socks that come halfway up the calf. Like it's you know, an episode of White Shadow or some shit. I mean, like... Yeah, I was going to say, they look like gym coaches, right? Yeah, it's it's, it's, not a, it's not a great look. That with... And then they're wearing them with what? Crocs and whoever else knows. But anyway, uh, thankfully, we've stayed out of the fridge. Gen X is, we'll wear both, right? Yeah. If it's clean, I'll wear it. Yeah, but that's (laughs) about the extent of why I care, you know? (laughs) 
Which uh, is dry clean only. That means it's dirty. <laughs> Mitch. All know. right, last one. All that star Lori Beth Denberg has uh, said that Dan Schneider showed her porn and initiated phone sex. And big shock, Schneider is denying it. And saying it was wildly exaggerated. And she was yeah. 19 at the time. Oh. All right. Bad for your boss to do that to you. Like when I worked at McDonald's, my manager wasn't showing me porn. But, you know, the, he would have had to, he would have said, hey, watch this and put it in the BCR. So it would have been. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, I don't want to dip into this one too much other than, you know, the guy was a dick. But he prove it. Prove that he did bad things that that are, you know, actionable. Or don't. I don't care. The documentary was good. It made him look like a creep. Yeah, where was she when this documentary was being made? She was not in it at all. Right. And that may be just kind of like her way of getting in on this a little bit. Yeah. Dude. Was she the big was she the big girl? Yeah. The boys has already been renewed for season five. Season four is not out yet. The season four trailer though is wow. Yeah. The boys is awesome. Uh, Jeopardy is getting a spinoff. Uh, Amazon Prime. It is a pop culture edition. They don't have a host yet, so you can look forward to that. This story bummed me out. Nicolas Cage is going to star in a noir 1930s Spider-Man show on Amazon Prime. First of all, how come Amazon Prime is getting it and not Disney? Spider-Man's one of those ones that's up in the air still. Yeah. Tony owns it, right? Yeah. I would rather see a gritty 1970s. Uh, you know, continuation from the original Spider-Man when you know, it was the 60s or whatever. Um, they did a good job, the artists in the 70s in the comic book of, the, of showing New York gritty kind of streets. Um, I would like to see that. Of course, I'm going uh, to... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to watch it. I'm going to watch it too. I like Nick Cage and... Um, I, like I love that character. That I mean, it was an awesome character to yeah. begin with. So, Yeah. Um, Rings of Power returns on uh, August 8th, if you're interested in that. And then uh, uh, for all you boomers, you can shut the hell up because they're going to bundle streaming. Disney Plus, Hulu, and Max uh, are going to bundle themselves up and you'll be able to get them from your overpriced cable outlet that won't carry the Braves. anybody watch club random we talked about it earlier uh bill burr is the most recent guest and all he did was make fun of him and destroy him for the entire episode which was good but i'm still not going to watch it uh except for the one part where bill burr does say that cancel culture is over and suggests louis ck's return as it's been long enough i would say that louis ck didn't go anywhere he did for a little while but i think but he's, he's paid it paid he's been years. back for a while there yeah. he's done three specials since then yeah, he'll never be what he was though. No, no, it, it no. should though. He was so fucking funny. I'm glad he won't be out there in the mainstream anymore because that means he'll do edgy um, stand up. Because the stand up was getting to be kind of milk toasty compared to his early stuff, and and then it got real dark and angry again. And that's the the Louis C.K. stand up that I like. Kind of like. Think, do you think that he would do it again? Do what again? Jerk off in front of somebody? Yeah. Probably, if he was allowed to. I think he'd ask first this time. That's what uh, I was he, he, asked, he asked last time. Well, he didn't ask the one. No. The one that said no. The one that I would him. I would hope that he would have at least went to, like, enough therapy or something for him to understand that uh -huh. even, even asking is very fucking weird. Yeah. You're so right. don't even ask, bro. Yeah, you totally shot me down when I asked you. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, you oddly you used to let me do it all the time. When we lived <laughs> Does anyone watch Superfly, which is the YouTube? Uh, I think it's just a one-on-one -on -one kind of conversation between Dana and David. I listened to it. I haven't watched it yet. Well, they, they were on the other day talking about the Netflix is a joke fest where they're all out in California. I don't think Dana's there, but David Spade was. And he, had a play, he was playing golf with Cat Williams. And neither, they were both doing impressions of him, but they sucked. Yeah, both, both impressed. Fucking, I, I was surprised that Dana, you, Dana's was so bad. Their impressions suck, bitch. <laughs> I couldn't believe how terrible they were. 
The one thing that came to my mind when I was playing golf with David Spade is he said he has to do things. And I said, nobody makes you do anything you don't want to do, bitch. (laughs) Dana, I thought maybe, sir, I thought Dana would be able to do a good impression of me, but he did not do a very good one. And neither did David Spade, whose only good impression is of Michael J. Fox. I sort of sound a little bit. That's a good Casey Kasem, too. Well, that's true. I don't know who that is, bitch. (laughs) (laughs) Sir. Sir. I'm going to go do another one hour stand up special that is intolerable and uneasy (laughs) on the eyes and ears. Guys, are you reading the online comments? Gotta read some of these comments. I'm loving your guys' comments. You're reading your own comments? Yeah, they're really good. I worked hard on them. The secret is, don't read the comment cards. All right, here we go. Uh, Tamed Shrew 235 says, The Bernie Atlanta Pizza in Euro commercial was SNL worthy. Thank you. I think so, too. I don't do a lot of Bernie anymore on the show, or at least I haven't in a couple of weeks because it might be too political. But we just made fun of Trump, so who cares? Uh, I learned the time. How do I? How great that I got a notification for this being uploaded right as I'm about to go for a walk. Thank you very much. Going for a walk, listening to this type of show, really clears the mind. Really clears it. Clears it out. Clears it out. Clears it out so much that you decide to run for Senate again when you're 82. You're walking and watching YouTube videos at the same time. That's all you could listen. That's a recipe for disaster. Don't fall into the hole. <laughs> uh, Tame True 235 also said, Remember when Pat Boone tried to be a rock star? We were talking about Pat Boone uh, in relation to what the Cat Williams special. I don't remember yeah. what I'm talking about. No, it was it was Steph's sister taking go into Cat Williams. Oh, that's show. right. Yeah, I, go, I went that Cat Williams show. Yeah. And it was uncomfortable. Yes. Uh, Deeb2359 said, good morning. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, Deeb. Uh, Fuxi says, Unfrosted featured my favorite cereal as a kid, Apple Jacks. When I was around five, we still got milk delivered in glass bottles by the milkman. We had to go to a dairy, but they were in glass bottles. Yeah. Um, I had an Apple Jacks bowl and a matching mug. One summer morning, I had my cereal already in my bowl, and my brother went to get the milk from the case. My mom was talking to the milkman, so the bottles were on the step inside of the box. My brother opened the door and tripped on the bottles, breaking them and wildly cutting his foot. I'm waiting for the milk, so I go to see what the holdup is. I look in the garage, and all I see is my mom and brother freaking out with blood and milk and broken glass all over the garage floor. I got in trouble for looking at this gory scene and yelling, I don't got no milk for my Apple Jacks. I think we can all empathize with Fuxi on that one. I want to know why his mom was chatting up the ma- the milkman. Well, <laughs> he is maybe. the milkman. Yeah, the milkman rings twice. Uh, David Goodman, 8342, says, When Jeff and Steph came up with their cereals, I immediately thought of the perfect make-believe cereal for Radio Labyrinth. Glory holds. <laughs> I haven't quite completed the cereal box design in my head, but in my head movies, but there are definitely two overly excited generic white kids in the mix. <laughs> Jeff made one, a couple of them. <laughs> the The first one says, Glory Whores, H-O-R-E. <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious. The, they, I, they can't handle text prompts. No. Uh, I had to, I had to fix it. it looks good. Oh, you did it in Photoshop? Yeah. And then the the last one you did, when I saw it, I almost fucking died. It's like two <laughs> Captain Crunches, and it says glory holes, and their mouths are open. So that's fun. <laughs> a little what do you big think? splash of milk in between them. Uh, yeah. But what do glory holes taste like? Yeah, what do they taste like? They're kind of salty. Sad, mm-hmm. sad and salty. <laughs> Sweet uh, and salty. and Duct tape. Sad. Bathroom. Salty apple, fabuloso, yes. The nice glory hole you go to, Dustin. Man, yeah, only the best. <laughs> Hi, it's Bernie. Bernie Sanders uh, for the Pod Burn and all that. Spring is here, and we're excited for warmer weather. Stop in to Atlanta Pizza in Euro uh, for one of their sixteen ice cold draft beers and ciders on tap. They do not have Bernie malt liquor yet, but we're working on it. 
Try one of the many local craft and domestic beers uh, available in cans and bottles. I hope they recycle them because that's very important. Their featured selection this spring is Spring Waters. Uh, spree, uh, uh, well, hang on. Let me start over. Their featured selection is this spring is Sweetwater Brewing's Half a Gummy Fruit Punch IPA. There's a lot to unpack there. Uh, there's a pot reference. It's IPA. It's got fruit punch, which is what you drink when you're high. You know, the guy, the Hawaiian punch guy with the hat. Delicious. It's easy drinking, sweet tasting IPA with low bitterness and delicious fruit flavors. ap and is a longtime favorite of Kanye's uh, and Covington and uh, the east metro area of Atlanta, Georgia. They're made to order pizzas, gyros, or gyros, however you say it, pasta specialties, and Greek salads are absolutely the best around. They wish to sincerely thank everybody for their business and support both now and into the future. They have a food truck. Their events are going on regularly, but if you're interested in booking one, uh, just contact Mike Paul at 770-483-6228. Open for dine-in or take out Monday through Friday, 11 to 9, Saturday, 12 to 9, closed on Sundays. I don't know about the Glory Hall. You guys said earlier it was open again. I doubt it. Uh, celebrity voice impersonated. Do you have a commercial or residential construction printing need? Well, what are you waiting for? Contact LDI Repro Printing of Athens. They've been in Athens, Georgia since 2005. With a fast turnaround and affordable prices, call 706-316-9366. Or you can email them at Athens at LDILine.com. Is views for... Or, 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 and snooze. Yeah, last week was Dark Matter, The Goat, and the Mark Twain Pies, which I watched all of them. Dark Matter is really good on Apple TV. Recommend it. The Mark Twain Pies was pretty good. Chappelle was the best. Seinfeld was good. Nick Cannon prank was funny. The Goat is okay. It's just a reality show. Daniel Tosh brings nothing to the table. No. Yeah, just his name on it and money you yeah. get off of it. <laughs> he wears crazy outfits. That's his his shtick for this show. That's okay if you're into reality shows. Hmm. This week, the whole show comes back out of range on the 16th. The whole show? The Glory Holes with Captain Crudge? Out of yeah. range, which yeah. I enjoyed the first season. Did you yeah, watch I'll watch it. it. Yeah, I did too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we talked great. about that show a little bit on Dudesy this week. In a fun and then uh, number two, The Big Cigar. This is going to be on Apple TV. Looks pretty cool. It's kind of like a period drama about Huey P. Newton when he went to Cuba. Okay. It looks pretty good. Hmm. I've seen a few trailers for it. And Spacey Unmasked, which is out now on HBO Max. It's like a two-hour documentary about all the shit that they're saying Kevin Spacey did. I'm definitely going to watch that. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Jeff. Time for staff picks. I'll give you mine real quick. Stacks, Soulville, USA, which premieres Monday the 20th on HBO Max. It's an original documentary series that captures how an underdog record label launched a movement and superstar musicians like Isaac Hayes, Otis Redding, and others. Uh, The trailer hooked me immediately, so I'm in. Uh, mine is Bodkin. Are you guys watching this on Netflix? I've watched like three of them. I'm not that into it. It's okay. I don't like Will Forte being all, all serious. Bodkin. It, yeah, but it's I. T- I don't look. I don't think of him as being serious because there's a lot of low key humor. If you keep going with it, Jeff. I mean, lots of low key humor. But I like it. It's like uh, an only murders in the building, but more dramatic. Yeah. It's not as zany. What's going on with this? He owes people money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Keep watching it. And it's a good mystery. Every single episode, you think it's going one way and then it's something else. I like else. The, the reporter lady. Yeah, the chick who's, yeah. uh, she's on, she's also in trouble um, back in yeah. London and everything like that. But yeah, the whole cast is is great. Everybody in the town is excellent. They don't want them there doing that right. podcast at all, digging up this old mystery in the hmm. town of Bodkin in Ireland. Um, and the scenery is gorgeous. So check out Bodkin on Netflix. I love it. All right. Mine is uh, Connor O'Malley's stand-up special just released on YouTube. Funny. Yesterday. Yeah, it's very funny. You know Connor O'Malley from Detroiters and... Oh, yeah. I think you should leave. 
holy shit, that guy's funny. I'm going to have yeah, to yeah. yeah, okay. We've been talking about and doing the reaction stuff on the Patreon show. Um, one of my favorite uh, reaction channels is called Cinebinge. Um, it's two Canadian, a girl and a guy. Uh, they're in their uh, early 30s. So um, they and they haven't these I've watched them for the last couple of years and they've they've went through all these movies that we all grew up on. And it's fun to just go through. And the, both of these people have a great sense of humor and and they get where everything's coming from. But it was interesting to see people's a different generation's point of view on a lot of our favorite movies. And these are by far the best when it comes to reaction channels. So uh, mm-hmm. Cinebinge on YouTube. Ooh, I kind of dig that out. Those. Don't you? I like to watch some of those different ones. Yeah, yeah. some of them I do. Especially if they get it. Yeah. If they don't get it. Sometimes they have a different point of view. Like what was uh, like the world's end, the Edgar Wright movie. Right. Um, and they, they, I, I didn't take it as a serious movie looking at addiction. And I didn't look at it through that light, but when I watched them watch it and they were so concerned with his mental stability and his well being for that character that it put, it made me think about the movie differently. And that's why I like the the reaction channels because, you know, my opinion that I develop on a movie that I've watched 20 times and then to watch somebody else watch it and have a completely different opinion on it and be able to see that makes the movie better to me for some reason. Yeah, I like that. That's a good, that's a good way of doing things. I like, you see things or you hear things that you didn't maybe notice. So that's cool. Awesome. Mm. I think. Um, I like to watch millennials watch comedy movies from the 80s and get upset. Anyway, not look, look at all those ankle sacks. All right. Hey, let's do some plugs. You can check out my show, Trambles, which is uh, adjacent. It's in the Radio Labyrinth audio feed. So wherever you find your podcasts in that way, uh, basically just goof off, talk about my life a little bit. This week's I enjoyed doing a Seinfeld thing. So you can check that out. Uh, Popcast is a radio show that I do on 95.5 WSB in Atlanta. If you live anywhere else, you can probably pick it up on 750. AM if it's at night, which it is 7 p.m., but the sun's up, so maybe you'll have to wait and get it on the podcast, which comes out the following Monday. Or, hey, you know, modern era and everything, if you have a smartphone, you can download the WSB radio app and listen to it on that if you so choose. My guest this week, comedian Mario Adrian. Have you guys ever heard of him? No. <laughs> He's a German comedian. He's 30 years old. Um, uh, yeah, now I'm 23 years older than all these young comedians who are out there. He used to be a fashion model. He uh, was on Germany's Next Top Model with Heidi Klum. He also was on stage on American Idol doing a catwalk thing with a pair of underwear on and with Katy Perry. So you would think, oh, this guy, he does. A, he has a YouTube channel. He does a lot of uh, horsing around and, and stuff like that. So I imagine that people would think this guy, oh, he just he's not really a comedian. Well, he is. His stand-up is pretty funny, and he was a really cool guy to talk to. He was interesting and I had all these questions thinking it was just going to be a real quick, snappy interview, and it was just a conversation. So, And then uh, also joining me will be comedian Michael Albanese, who was just in Atlanta for the Red Clay Comedy Festival and is back in New York, and uh, he produces the uh, podcast with Robert Kelly. What is the name of that show? Oh, you're talking about with uh, and Big J. Okerson, that one? Uh-huh. Yes. He's the third Mike on that. Yeah. I believe he produces it. So we're going to talk about that, too. Hey, you know, if you uh, like this show a lot, you can become a Patreon member and get access to our weekly uh, Patreon only show. Sometimes it's longer, sometimes it's shorter, but it's a lot of fun. This week we did uh, a breakdown. We just watched along with an old cartoon that used to air uh, in the 60s, but we grew up watching it in the 70s called Courageous Cat and Minute Mouse, right? Minute Mouse? Forgot already. But we watched an episode of that, and it's a lot of fun. Bob Kane created it, the creator of Batman. And we sort of sit there and make fun of it a little bit. And we do stuff like that every week. And uh, so you can come in at any level, $1 all the way up, and have access to our Patreon show. Or you can become a Patreon producer. If you become a producer of the show, you get a credit and your name read and all that jazz. You get a T-shirt 
and I'll do a drawing for you, a pop culture related drawing. And how about that? I can either do it freehand on, with paper and pencil or on an iPad. Uh, our $25 producer level producers are Tim Slayton, Brian and Chelsea Smith, Jim Peterson, Jim Fortner, Terry Fuller, Chris Chandler, uh, Roby Neely, Mike D, and Matt Carter. So thank you guys very, very much. If you're watching this on YouTube, please uh, like and subscribe. And uh, you don't have to turn on the alerts. Maybe you do. I don't know. But comment for sure. Um, comment. We like to read them. Sometimes I'll do a goofy voice if I haven't destroyed it doing Trump, which is very rare on this show. So that probably won't happen again for a while. Uh, but I really did, man. I shredded it. And uh, yeah, it's 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 great. Dustin does a kick-ass job editing this show. We're close to a thousand subscribers, and that's that's attainable for us, and that's what we want to get. So uh, once we get that, we get sweet ad cinch money, baby. And uh, we also have a store on there you can check out too, uh, or at least a link to it. We're gonna put it up there. And uh, but if you're you know traditionalist and you're listening to us on your favorite podcatcher, just remember to rate and review us there. And if we happen to catch it and it's new, we'll read it uh, and uh, and have a lot of fun with that. So unless there's anything else you guys have to say, yeah, I think that's about it for us this week. No, oh, I just wanted to say to uh, Tim Allen, you know, they uh, longtime supporter him and Amy, Amy of the show. They lost their dog Gunner a couple weeks ago. Yeah, and they were pretty. Gunner is a good old boy, and uh, but they got a new puppy. So I just wanted to tell them sorry about Gunner, and uh, also Gunner and, Gunner and Rizzo were hanging out. That very well could be. And um, and also, I never did get to say to uh, Chris Ellingwood, um, his parents went to Gwinnett County and they adopted a dog like about a month and a half ago and have been spoiling the crap out of this dog. And um, they're so sweet to do this. And it's an older dog and nobody else would have probably taken it. And um, anyway, so there's a lot of listeners of the show. They're such sweeties. That's yeah, that's awesome. Thank you for sharing that with us. We do that anytime something like that happens. That's awesome. We have good listeners, longtime listeners, people who've been with us since, God, when did we start this? December of 2015. And we've been going strong ever since. Thank you. If you've made it this far and you're a new viewer, thank you for sticking with us. We really appreciate it. We really do. And uh, we brought on a whole bunch of new people, right, Dustin? Yeah. Yeah. In the last few weeks, hundreds. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. So thank you very much. Uh, keep keep listening. Um, let us know in the comments and stuff what you what you like to hear us talk about and and all that jazz. And and again, I promise I won't destroy my vo- I won't destroy my voice, Dan Trump. I promise. I really pushed it too much. All right. Till next week. Please remember to. Well, they say all good things come to an end. What's that got to do with this show? <laughs> <laughs>